Hi, today we're gonna to bring some variety to our workout by blending Pilates and bar in a really cool fusion utilizing the resistance band and the bender ball, along with a bar, like a booty kicker. If you don't have a booty kicker yet, then wrapping your resistance band around a door handle might work. You do want something that's gonna be a little bit sturdy so that you can pull against it. If you're just joining me for the first time, hi, my name is Mariah. Welcome to Wealthy Boss. Every week I bring you new Pilates, yoga, bar, and meditation videos. So if you like that type of workout, go ahead and subscribe, and then let's go ahead and get to work. We'll start by facing the bar for some gentle standing cat cows. Loosen up that spine. Now, depending on how tall you are is going to dictate the, the amount of distance you have from that bar so that you can lift up in that heart and extend the spine and then draping and rounding forward. So feel free to play with this one a little bit to get as much movement as you'd like in the spine. This is a Pilates bar fusion, and of course, Pilates is all about spinal health. So we start off right off the bat, warming up that spine. And it's up to you if you're used to a yoga breath with cat cow in and out through the nose, that's great. Otherwise, I might be cueing you through part of today's practice through a Pilates breath, which is in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just those nice deep breaths are what we're really after though, that's the most important thing. Lifting on the inhale, exhale, and rounding. Last one, please. Perfect. Now we're gonna do a variation of what we would think of as footwork if we were on a Pilates reformer. But standing upright, it actually looks pretty simple. It looks like some calf raises. So we're very gently lifting and lowering the heels with a lot of control. We wanna warm up in the calf muscles here learn how to really feel our feet underneath us because the more correctly that the feet fire up and grip the ground underneath us the more everything north of the feet which is everything in the body are going to stack up correctly we're more likely to have good alignment get more benefit out of the movement and of course we're strengthening those feet whenever we're gripping the ground as well so notice if your ankles are either rolling in or rolling out. See if you can keep them just right above that heel bone. From here, we're gonna take the heels together, toes apart. So this is our external rotation. We often think of this as our first position from ballet. And as we do this, we're thinking about really squeezing the inner thighs together so you feel the inner thighs kind of adductor area light up. We're also warming up the hips by having the toes turned out a little bit. Very nice. Just want to get a lot of openness in the backs of those calves, opening up through the hips and the feet so that we can get more out of our movements later on. We're aware of our posture. How upright are you standing? Could you make that maybe micro adjustment to stand a little straighter? And from here, we're going to now come into pigeon toes. So this is gonna be the, the funniest feeling position, but we want to have that internal rotation as well. Again, if we were lying on our backs on a Pilates reformer, if you've ever done that, then we would always include this internal rotation. Typically, we'd be pressing away from a foot bar, but today we're just gonna do it again against the ground. Perfect. So you feel this a little bit more in the outer edges of the legs, whereas before, with the toes turned out, you felt it more in the inner thighs. And let's do three. Here's two. Here's one. Perfect. Go ahead and hold on to that bar if you're not already. You're going to take the feet back and fold over. Now you want to have the feet kind of stacked underneath the hips if possible. We're gonna add a little bend of the right knee holding on to the bar with the right arm. We're gonna drop that opposite hand to the ground now for a little bit of a twist. And that top arm can really be pressing down to get a little bit of a shoulder stretch as well. And then we're going to switch. So we're reaching with the same side hand as the 
knee that's bending down onto the bar, and then opposite hand comes down for that twist, and we keep cycling through. Now, if you wanted a little bit more balance challenge, a little bit more of a spinal twist to engage the obliques, you could take that top hand up to the sky rather than holding onto the bar. So that would mean if you were bending your left knee, you'd reach that left hand up to the sky, bottom hand comes down. If you preferred holding on to the bar, all good. You can get a little extra shoulder stretch there by actively pressing palm down into the bar. And no worries if your bottom hand does not reach the ground, it doesn't have to. Let's do one more in each direction. Warming up at hamstrings, IT band, and getting that nice spine nice and open as well. And then let's roll ourselves up. We're gonna take the feet even further back and then let's go ahead and grab that bender ball. We're gonna be using it a lot later on, but take that bender ball between the legs. And we want that bender ball to be just a little bit squishy. We don't want it completely overblown. And perfect. From here, we're gonna just give that ball a little squeeze. We're gonna take the elbows wide to the side as we lower chest down towards the bar, press away. Lower down, press away. We inhale as we come in. We exhale as we extend. If you want a little bit more challenge, take your feet out further away from the bar. I'm pretty short, so my distance from the bar <laughs> is a little bit limited by that. We're dropping shoulders away from the ears. We wanna really pull the shoulder blades apart as though they were moving in opposite directions. And then since this is a bar and Pilates fusion class, we're gonna kinda barify these push-ups. So we're gonna go to the furthest end point of that Push up. So as low as the chest wants to go today, pulling in through the belly so we have a nice straight line from the ankles to the shoulders. Now press away only halfway up and then come back home. Oh, only halfway up, come back home. We are strengthening the chest and the back muscles here. Get a little shoulder action as well. We're still pressing away on the exhale. Inhale as we lower because we're not fully straightening our arms, we are having to continuously contract our muscles. It fatigues us a little bit faster, a little bit more. And now, what if you just held little one inch pulses? So it's almost a hold, but there's just a barely imperceptible movement here. We're still zipping up through the belly. The back of the neck is long for four, three, two, one, perfect. Let's take one more flat back fold over, just stretching out through the spine. And then let's come all the way up. We are going to take that resistance band now. So we're gonna be using a lot um, of the resistance band and the bender ball today. So for now, I'd like you to have that resistance band draped over and the bender ball just nearby. We're gonna need it in a moment. So finding as much distance as we want, determining the amount of resistance we get in the bicep curl. We're taking a little squat with a bicep curl here. Just simple compound movement. I suggest an inhale as you lower and an exhale as you rise. We're really pulling back away from that bar so that the booty is dropping back behind us without falling, of course. Very good. And we're only lowering it to our comfort level, whatever your knees allow you to do today. We're gonna be here a while, so we are going to get a lot of muscular endurance through the layering of the range of motion. So you don't have to go super deep every time here. Perfect. Now I want you to hold here and then reposition to grab that ball. You can kind of roll it underneath you if you'd like with that foot, under the right foot. So you're stamping down to that ball as much as is possible for a little instability challenge as we come up half range and take it back down. So arms are just gonna continue with a full range bicep curl, just doing what they were doing before so that we can pay attention to what's going on with the lower body. So it's almost like a single leg squat, but you'll notice the more that you press that right foot into the ball, the harder it is. So we are putting a little bit of weight into that ball. Then all the stabler, my stabilizer muscles have to kick in like crazy. Very good. Make sure those shoulders are shrugging away from the ears for the bicep curls. There it is. And then pause at the bottom. 
pause, pause, pause. We're gonna go a little bit lower if we can. And then those arms are gonna come up so that the elbows are as high as the shoulders. And then just give me little pulses in with a bicep curl. In, 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 in for three, two, one. Come up for just long enough to reposition that ball underneath the opposite foot. We're gonna go back to that full range bicep curl, but come up halfway with the legs. So you're lowering down to whatever the low range is with this weird configuration that we have. It does not need to resemble the full range of a traditional squat because we got different circumstances working with here. How about that deep breath? Let it carry you through. Very good. Are you as far away from the bar as you want to be to get the type of engagement you want for those biceps? If you feel like the biceps could handle a little more, try tiptoeing away from the bar another couple of inches. Or conversely, if this is starting to feel a little fatiguing for those bicep curls, just inch your way in a little bit. Here's two. Here's one, and then we keep the legs where they are. Continue pressing that left foot down into the ball if it will. And then elbows raise up as high as the shoulders for a little extra. Give me little teeny squeezes in the resistance band towards your shoulders. Just a one inch pulse in, in, in. Are those elbows as high as the shoulders? I know there's a lot going on right now, but that's gonna make a difference. For four, three, two, one, we're gonna come up just for a moment to drop that ball or kind of kick it away. And then could you lift your heels? We're gonna drop back down into our squat. So we're finding the lowest portion of our squat again. The arms are gonna come to a little low row here as we do little teeny squats with the legs. So a nice low row, elbows hug in towards the ribs, see if you can reach them behind you, and it's little pulses up with the legs. Now we have that extra balance challenge because we're pulling ourselves away from the bar, so we've got a little bit of a dynamic balance situation to play with here. We're tuning in to the nuances of how those little changes in the way that this movement is structured ends up impacting how the muscles work. Very good, here's four, three, two, one, and come all the way up. You just squatted for five minutes, my friend. From here, we are going to go to face the bar. So same position as before, but we're coming into a lunge. So let's start with the right leg behind us. We're going to take a back fly. So arms are kind of just slightly micro bent, palms face in, as we sweep them back wide of the shoulders or maybe even a tiny bit behind as the knee lowers down. We'll keep that right foot planted as we come up, returning handles in front of the shoulder. Let's try that again. Very good. So traditional lunge, both knees are bending. We're trying to maintain an upright torso here. There's no need to hinge forward on this one right now. We're aware, aware of that posture and we're really squeezing the shoulder blades together to work the muscles at the back as we try to open up those hands wide of the shoulders. Again, we're lowering down as low as feels appropriate for you today. We wanna take a quick peek at that front leg and make sure that as we come down for that lunge, we can still see the toes kind of wiggling in front of that kneecap to know that we're keeping the knees safe. There we go, lots of big muscles being worked here. This is gonna rev up our metabolism, lead to more overall strength, muscle fibers, and of course that great metabolism that helps us burn more calories when we are not exercising, which I love. Now could you hold at the bottom? We're going to take it now into an upright row with the arms, so elbows bend and come high up about the height of the shoulders. And then we squeeze shoulder blades together as we come up only halfway with the legs and then take it back down. So we're in the bottom half of the lunge. We switch to an upright row, so we get a lot of rear delt here, get a little bit into those rhomboids. We exhale, pull it back, yes, very good. We're still staying upright. 
working into those upper back muscles. Could you go a little bit longer? The answer is yes. Even if you need to readjust your position here, you're doing amazing. Okay, we're gonna hold with the legs now. Just hold with the legs. And then little pulses with those back flies. So we're back to that first thing we did with the arms. Little pulses, so we're keeping them wide. Legs are still. And then we're gonna return full motion with those back flies as we lift the legs an inch. And then super slow motion, drop the legs an inch. So legs are going so, so slow here to allow time for a full range back fly. Amazing. Now, if you figured something out, <laughs> then you might recognize that we did all this work on one leg, which means we get to do it all again on the other leg. But what else does that mean? The arms get to do the whole darn thing again. So let's come all the way up and we repeat that whole thing on the other side. So step back with that left leg, back flies continue. Hooray! We're gonna get that strong, sculpted, sexy back. It's also gonna help us have great posture. We're going full range now, which feels amazing by the way. <laughs> full range, fresh leg, life is good. How's that breath? We wanna Inhale as we lower, exhale as we rise. Good, doing that little spot check with the forward leg to make sure you can still see those toes in front of the kneecap at the bottom of the lunge. Fantastic. Here's four, three, squeeze those shoulders together. One, now find your lowest lunge. Find the lowest portion that your knees are okay with we're switching to that upright row now as we come up halfway with the legs and then lower back down halfway with the legs lower back down we're doing so many good things for our bodies right now we're getting stronger we're challenging our balance a little bit here we're firing up our metabolism we might feel a little bit of cardio here because we're getting that heart rate elevated with that up and down movement here yes you can here's three here's two one hold the bottom of your squat with your legs and then we're pulsing that back fly so take your hands wide and just stay wide it's just a teeny teeny movement as wide as you can use your breath with these pulses maybe take that breath out through the mouth like a pilates breath four three two one now back flies return to full range we're lifting up super slow just one inch with the legs down an inch with the legs but it's like you were watching the legs in slow motion here's four three two and one and we are done with lunges are you sad are you so sad don't worry, we got plenty more to do today. So we want to take our arms with the palms facing behind us. And again, we're going to just play with the distance required from the bar here. Also, depending on how tall you are, because you don't want to hit your head against the bar. We're moving into a warrior three. So arms come behind us as we take a little extension into warrior three and then challenge that balance as you come back up, draw the knee in towards the chest. So extend the leg out. You could flex the foot if that helps you feel more stable, but then we're going to point the toe as we hug through the belly, the knee in towards the chest. Take your time with this one. The slower we go, the more we can kind of control the movement and, and focus on the nuances against gravity here. Making sure as we extend into that warrior three that we've kind of dropped that right hip down. So technically, I guess we could say this is a bar Pilates and yoga fusion, but that gets to be a really long name of a workout, but we're kind of sneaking in a little bit of movement from yoga here with this warrior three. And make sure we're getting as much good stuff in as possible. 
Wonderful, you're doing amazing. Now, could you hold the warrior three with arms extended behind you? So torso's forward, you're lifting the belly away from the ground. You're gonna lower and lift that leg. That obviously the leg that's lifted, <laughs> not the standing one, that's not possible. Exhale as you lift, inhale as you lower. Could you drop that hip down a little bit further because it probably wanted to hike up? Fantastic. Now, could you lift just the top half so the foot is no longer tapping the ground, it's hovering above? Amazing. Now, could you just hold the warrior three and give me little pulses with the arms? It's a press, press. Press, legs are still, abdominals are pulling and embrace this whole darn thing. For four, three, two, one, come up. You guessed it, those triceps are getting double duty. We're gonna come back with that opposite leg now into the warrior three. Triceps come with, and then standing balance challenge. And he pulls in using the strength of your abs. Keep standing nice and upright as you do that. Alternating from that warrior three with arms reaching up, palms facing this guy, pulling the in towards the chest for a little squeeze of the belly and a balance challenge. You're doing great. We're gonna go for a couple more of these. So nice. Drop that left hip if it starts to hike. Now hold the leg the next time you come into that warrior three. Just keep it elevated. You're really pulling in through the belly to stabilize and brace. Now tap the ground with a back toe and lift. No higher than hip height because we wanna square those hips off. It's gonna be more work for that standing booty. I know, you're welcome. Here's four, three, two, one. Now just the top half. Remember, we're not done yet. Just the top half. Resist that temptation to angle the belly button off to the side. Keep it pointing below you, although the whole um, wall of the abdominals are pulling up. We want to avoid them rotating out to the left so that we can get as much work as possible in that standing leg. Now, little static hold with the legs. Pulse the arms for me. Pulse the arms. You're squeezing the backs of those triceps, toning up the backs of the arms. We have just two, one, and come all the way up. I am so proud of you. You did amazing. Now from here, we are going to come into some standing core and upper body so those legs do get a little break, which is great news. We are going to double up those bands and then rotate so that we're perpendicular to the bar. So if you need to adjust um, the laptop or cell phone or whatever you're watching me on, or maybe you're watching me on the Booty Kicker iPad um, attachment, which is great. You can kind of just turn your head to see me. And um, again, the distance from the bar is gonna determine how hard you're working here. From here, we're coming into our lateral flexion with standing rotation. So we're gonna be alternating. So we come up um, with the arms, we're gonna reach it up, and there's a little reach to the side, drop the shoulders down, and then as soon as we come up, hands drop in front of the chest and we take it into a rotation. So we're standing pretty far away from that bar the more that we want to work. Do be careful as you reach over for that little rainbow reach. We want to think about lifting up in both sides of the body. I'm going to show you um, one, one time how not to do it. So there's a temptation here to cave in towards the side that we're folding over. But instead, I want you to think about lifting up and then over, almost like you had a little bar underneath that outside rib that you were kind of having to hurdle over. Yes, and that's giving us that lateral flexion that we want. And then of course, the, that rotation in between. As we rotate, this is really important. We wanna keep sending those hip bones straight forward, even though we're moving the chest away. So notice if you're rotating the hips with you, how the instep of that foot starts to lift up. You wanna feel both of the insides of the feet actively pressing down into the ground. That's gonna be your little cue if the hips start to rotate to really firm up through the legs, you're pressing the feet down into the mat, gripping through the feet, lifting up through these inner thighs, and then firming up in the abdominals to keep those hip bones pointing forward. So it's the 
and the transverse abdominis and obliques that are stabilizing to prevent those hip bones from moving. That was a lot of kind of being nitpicky, but in Pilates, it's all about focusing on the alignment. It's not necessarily about a ton of reps or moving through things really quickly. It's about getting really correct movement so that you can get deeper into the benefits. Fantastic. Last one, please, each of each movement. And before we do the other side, we've got a little bit more work to do here. So we're gonna start with a little rotator cuff uh, movement here. So you can drop the outside arm. We're gonna continue holding both handles with the inside arm. I want that elbow to stay really close to the rib cage. I always explain this when I teach this in person, that imagine I have duct taped your arm to your body so your upper arm cannot move. And then that hand is just pulling in front of the belly and then opening back up. So again, notice if that elbow drifts towards the front of the body as you come forward or as you take the fingertips open, notice if it drifts away to the side. We'd rather have a smaller movement with the arm than have the elbow be traveling everywhere. Very good. Last one, please. And then we're gonna move to the outside hand. So we just switch the handles to the outside hand. This is gonna be a little bit more challenging because already we have more distance from the bar. So you may wanna step in a little closer to the bar. And now we move to that external rotation. And again, same story. That elbow for this one really wants to come forward, but see if you can just drop it right underneath the shoulder. So just straight line from the shoulder to the elbow underneath and then pull away from that bar. You're bracing through the abdominals. You're actively pressing the feet into the earth to get really still with the rest of the body so that it's only that forearm that's moving. Very good, here's three. Here's two. Here's one. This is my favorite thing to do next, and you may wanna step in a little closer if you haven't already. We're gonna take both handles through the um, or actually the wrist, I should say, through both handles. So the handles are just kind of resting on the outside of the wrist, palms face down. We wanna start with the palm just directly forward of the shoulder and shoulder height. And then, ooh, give me a little squeeze out to the side. This is amazing for your rear delts, so your, the backs of your shoulders. Love this one. Nothing else is moving. Those hips don't move with you. Torso doesn't move, just the arm. Amazing, give me a few more if you've got them in you. I know you do. Here's four, three, two, and one. Hooray, you did great. Before we do this on the other side, we're gonna get a little bit more standing core work here to work the sides of the waist. We're gonna grab that bender ball but drop the resistance band. So from here, we take the forearm to the bar the bender ball rolls up the leg as we lift the leg and then roll it back up as we drop it down. So you're rolling, reaching, reaching up, come back down. Very good. So the waist is cinching in. We're also getting some strength on the, along the outer edge of that leg. So our abductors. Very nice. We just have a couple more of these, please. Here's three two, and one. All right, we get to do that whole series on the other side. I know you're so excited. So we double up those bands. We're starting with that inside hand. As far, we might step back out because we had stepped back in for that previous work. And then remember, elbow stays in place now as we firm up the belly, sweep that hand across. Open it up, but elbow stays in. Sweep it across. I'm going to suggest an exhale as you draw the hand across the belly and an inhale as you open it back up. Your exhale is through your mouth, through kind of like a sharp um, pursed lip. And it's audible. That's going to fire up more of your deep transverse abdominus muscles, get more core work. Fantastic. I am so glad you showed up here today. It would have been so lonely if I were just doing this by myself. Here's four, three, two, 
one switch hands, my friends, which means you may need to come in just a little bit because we've already increased the distance just by switching it to the hand, other hand. Yes, now notice if that elbow creeps forward, pull it back right next to your ribs. Remember, I have duct taped that upper arm to your rib cage. You're grounding down into the earth with your feet as though you could go an inch taller. You're still breathing, please. Yes, yes, last two. All right, here's that favorite one of mine that we're gonna go for that rear delt fly. So a hands thread through both handles. So it's just on the outer edge of the wrist, palm down, hand is as high as the shoulder, and then sweep it out to the side. I don't care if it's only an inch. That tells me that you're working really hard. If you cannot open much wider, that just means that you've got some really good resistance against that bar. So I'd rather see you struggle a little bit on this thing, step in so close that you, that you make it easy. Anytime we have difficulty reaching that full range means we're really challenging ourselves with the load and the resistance, which is all good. Yeah, <laughs> could you do this all day? How about just four more? Three, two, one. Go ahead and grab that bender ball again. Ditch the resistance band. Forearm comes to the bar, so we move in a little closer. Leg lifts as we roll the ball down the leg and then come up. Roll down the leg, reach it back. You can, you can. How about two more? There's one, perfect. From here, we're going to drop the ball. Take the handles in your hands again, but this time chest faces away from the bar. So you've got your back to the bar. We're just gonna open up, do a little chest expansion here. So we're reaching, we'll hug a tree here, actually. Yeah, we reach, 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 open it up. Reach and squeeze through those pectoral muscles. Very good. It's so good to strengthen your chest, to open it up, because all day long, most of us tend to be kind of rolling forward with the shoulders, closing off the chest muscles. Here's five, four, Three, two, no, could you just hold the arms wide for me? Give me little pulses here, wide, 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 so good. How about four, three, two, and one? Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we're done with the standing work. Bad news is we've got some really great core work planned for you. So we're gonna take that bender ball join me down on the ground with the resistance bands in our hands. So the ball comes behind the low back, so it's just kind of right behind the tailbone. There's not a lot of space between the ball and the tailbone. And again, you're gonna position yourself as far back as you want, depending on how much more you want for those biceps. We're gonna do a little um, reach back, give me a little bicep curl back, peel up, give me another bicep curl. So that was your test run. If you wanna reposition your distance from the bar, feel free to do that. We roll back until we feel those abdominals light up. We hold it as those abdominals shake a little bit. Give me a bicep curl, we peel back up, bicep curl at the top. Slow and controlled, we're maintaining a C curve of the spine with that bender ball supporting the low back. Deep, deep breaths here. We're taking that out breath through the mouth with pursed lips. <sighs> you're blowing out a little birthday candle. Mm -mm -mm, so good. You're gonna add a little bar flare to this in a moment. So now I'd like you to peel back halfway. So not all the way up, not all the way back. I want you to give me the front half of your bicep curl. So you're taking the fingertips above the elbows and then extending them long again. So you're not pulling all the way in, you're stopping when fingertips come right above the elbows. Take it back. <laughs> Abs are just hanging out here. They're just having a party. Yes, you can. Last two. 
and then come all the way back into that lowest portion where your back still feels safe, but the abdominals are turning on. We still have a C curve, so we're not yet in spinal extension. And then take the elbows up, but hands come all the way towards the shoulders and then back to that perpendicular position. Yes, yeah, so we're only returning them now to above the elbows. They squeeze in towards the shoulders. You're doing so well. How are the abdominals doing? <laughs> of course, if you need to peel up a little bit from that bender ball, feel free to do that if those abs are having a heyday. All good stuff. And then peel it back, hold, hold, hold. Give me a little elbow flares out to the side, just little teeny tiny ones, just open open maintaining steady resistance against that band yep you got it six five four three two one come up just for a moment just for a moment y'all we're moving into our bow and arrow next so that we can get that nice rotation in with this abdominal work so as we lean back, we take the right elbow with us and you look back towards that elbow. Come up and center and then you peel back down, take left elbow behind you, look over your elbow, come back up and center. Amazing. This is so good for our obliques, for our waist, for our spine. It's that out breath as you rotate and your in breath pulls you back up. Yes, yes, yes. Could you give me one more on each side, please? And I actually have some good news for you <laughs> where those bands are actually gonna make this next part a touch easier only if you need. The Pilates roll up is a quintessential abdominal exercise, really great barometer for where your core strength is, but it's not easy and sometimes it can be really frustrating. And the addition of the resistance bands actually helps you here. So we take the legs long. I'm gonna roll back one vertebra at a time and then Without momentum, that's the key here. It's like how slow can you go as you peel up one vertebrae at a time, but plant the heels down into the ground. That's the one request I have of you. So if that's not happening without resistance bands, then typically having those bands are gonna make it a little bit uh, more helpful to be able to overcome that urge to lift the heels off the ground. Now here's a little trick. If you still are kind of fighting with that, those heels wanting to pop up in that middle section, you could actually pull a little bit further away from the bar and it's actually gonna help you more as you peel back up. You'll have a little bit more um, tension on the bands to help prop you back upright. If you don't need the bands, of course, you can ditch them and do a traditional roll up. But it's kind of nice to have that practice where you can feel like you can be successful, where you can come all the way up and all the way down. Whereas, you know, otherwise we are relying on momentum if we don't quite have that seamless roll up, which we never want to get in the habit of doing. Or otherwise we're just staying either at the bottom or the top, which can sometimes just, just not feel super fun. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to just have that little training wheel to kind of prop us back up. Last one, please. And then we're gonna do some really lovely things from here. So we are going to reposition ourselves now so that our head is under the bar. So we're just flip-flopping those legs out in the other direction. I'm gonna place that bender ball again under my spine, but I'm, or actually under my tailbone, but I am lying on my back now. So we're gonna mimic what we would do on a Pilates reformer, typically at the end of um, a class. We might do some legs and straps. Um, we're going to start with our bend and stretch and you do want that ball again just nestled underneath the tailbone so a nice little bend and stretch here now as we come in we're only taking the knees right above the hips we're not coming all the way in towards the chest because we want kind of steady tension yes so good now we could do a bend and stretch on the ground without on the ground without a bender ball and without resistance bands, but this adds that extra little bit of resistance away from the bar, and of course the instability of the bender ball under the spine acts um, acts as a little bit of a reason for our abs to get a little bit more work. 
perfect. And then we're gonna take the legs over the hips, turn the ankles out for me, squeeze the heels together so you're in a little Pilates V, your first position here. And then continue squeezing the inseam of your pants together as you lower and lift. Add a little squeeze for me at the bottom. Just a little squeeze out and up, out and up. Now, I am also a big fan of adding the bender ball between the ankles when we do things on a Pilates reformer. So we could have actually done this exercise with two bender balls, but I'm just banking on the fact that not everyone has two bender balls. So we're now actually gonna repeat that series with instead of the ball being underneath the tailbone, it's actually gonna be between the ankles. So we're gonna roll off of it. Now place that ball between the ankles. We're gonna repeat the bend and stretch, but this time give that ball a little squeeze with those ankles. And we're just gluing the tailbone down now onto the mat or the carpet underneath us because we no longer have that ball underneath us. We wanna make sure we're really pressing the tailbone down so that we don't extend into the spine. I'm gonna keep those abs working in the back safe. That's amazing. Yes, and then take it all the way up. We're gonna turn the toes out. We continue to squeeze the heels together even though they won't touch. You'll notice that little instability. They may roll around a bit, that's all good. We're gonna lower and lift. Again, we're gluing the little mouse house underneath our spine down onto the ground underneath us. That's gonna result in more abdominal engagement and more safety for your back. Now, could you add a little squeeze at the top, maybe three little squeezes. <laughs> three little squeezes at the bottom. <laughs> three little squeezes at the top. <laughs> three little squeezes at the bottom. <laughs> and that's amazing. We're gonna take that ball now, place it back under the tailbone, and we wanna come pretty far away from the bar. We're moving into our leg circles and our frogs, so this feels good to have a little bit of tension away from it. Hands can just be kind of relaxed by the um, sides of the body or kind of pressing down for stability if you'd like. And then taking some circles with those legs. So depending on where we are in our Pilates practice, if we were on a reformer, sometimes I'd have you keep these circles smaller so that we can work more on that pelvic stability. But we're nearing the end of class here. I just want this to feel good and juicy and help increase the range of motion in your hips. So I'm okay with them being a little bit wider here. Having the ball under the tailbone should feel good. It should feel like a little bit of a massage. Ah, nice smooth, steady circles. Inviting the flow of synovial fluid into that ball and socket joint. And could you take it opposite direction, please? Ah, this feels so good after all that focused and controlled work. We're ready for our frog next. So we're gonna take the knees wide, but we're only keeping the knees as um, far forward as the hips. So we're not allowing them to come in towards the chest. And then toes are out and then we extend on the diagonal, squeeze those legs together, pull it back open. Squeeze it out, pull it back open. Again, if you had two bender balls, you could actually keep one under your tailbone and then send that other one between the ankles for this one as well. Let's do four, three, two, and one. Awesome job. We're now gonna slide just the left handle under the ankle for the flex foot. So if you can get your foot all the way through it, yep, gonna kind of hold onto the ankle. And then the you can kind of wiggle or reposition that resistance band. It sometimes wants to kind of stick on the bar. But pull the other handle down by the chest for a hamstring stretch. And then the long leg can come all the way down and we're really pressing that bottom leg down into the ground to really find a deep, deep release, pardon me, in that hip. And then of course we're getting a hamstring stretch on the other side. So good, let's gently take it open to the side but not so far that you can fall off the ball. 
You can extend that arm across you if you'd like. Let's take it across the body for a little IT band stretch. You could take the handle to the opposite arm if that feels better. Nice, deep, steady, relaxing breaths here as we recover from that focus, that control, that hard work. Good, and then we'll just wiggle that foot out of the handle, do the same thing on the other side. So again, you might kind of have to flip or scoot that resistance band a little bit because it likes to catch on that bar. And then we're pulling down as low as we care to go with that hamstring. Opposite leg comes long and we really focus on what we feel in the hip of this long extended leg. So the more you press that leg down into the ground, the more length you should feel on that hip. And of course, nice hamstring stretch on the other side. Let's open it back up to the side, releasing that inner hip. Nice, silky, smooth breaths. Let's reach across the body, maybe to the other side. The straighter you take that leg, the more you're gonna feel it. It's up to you. Good, pull that leg straight back up. Shimmy the foot out of the handle. Take those feet down to the ground. Catch your breath here for a moment. Collect your thoughts. Reintegrate that body back into your daily routine, your day-to-day -day movement or activities. Just grateful here to have taken some time to reflect on our bodies, to improve them, to become more aware of them in space, and to invest in their well-being. Thank you so much for joining me. This was such a fun practice. I enjoyed putting it together. Now, if you don't yet have a booty kicker, I do recommend it for a practice like this where you're doing a lot of work with the resistance band. Our bodies are amazing machines and our body weight is fantastic for toning and strengthening. Um, but sometimes having the addition of the tools like the booty kicker just helps us incorporate more variety. What I specifically like about the combination of the resistance band and the bar is that you're able to mimic the things on the ground. Um, a lot of work that we might do on a Pilates reformer, which is just kind of a fun way to get some of the former Pilates benefits at home. So I'm gonna share just a little bit about the booty kicker in case you wanna get one. The booty kicker is my favorite freestanding bar. I used to not really love freestanding bars because you can't put any weight against them. The booty kicker changes all that. It's portable, it's collapsible so that it can store easily under a bed or in the corner of a closet. But most importantly, it's designed so that you can put weight against it. This means you can do your flat back fold overs. It means it can help support with balance, push-ups. You can tie resistance tubing to it. This is such a game changer for at-home bar workouts, and I can't wait for you to try it. It even has this cool optional iPad accessory so that you can follow along with workouts from yours truly. And you can save $20 and get a free Bender Ball as a special gift when you use my affiliate link, wealthyboss.com forward slash booty. I receive a small referral commission whenever you make a purchase, which actually saves you money while continuing to support the free online classes that I provide. I can't wait for you to try it, so check out wealthyboss.com forward slash booty and let me know what you think.